All right, how do you do? And welcome back to CEO 2018 for the Injustice Pro Series. Uh, we're going to move into the top 24 now of this event. We started off with many, many more players than that, but most of them have been <laughs> eliminated at this point. Only three per pool have moved on, and we're going to have the winner's side starting off on the stream. That includes matchups like Echo Fox Scar and Noble Tweety. That's going to be a good one. It includes Deoxys versus Biohazard, DR Gross versus Honeybee, and Samij versus Sonic Fox. Samij and Sonic Fox, the IPS Grand Finals run back, and I yeah. feel like they really haven't gone toe-to-toe -to -toe in quite some time. I don't think so, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like a lot has changed, not only about like the scene and the, the level of players and you know who's really good now, yeah. but also uh, more about just, you know, even just the characters at their core. Like, who, sure. would, who would Sonic Fox really pick against Samij just Catwoman now. Would Samij surprise him with a different pick? But, right. Uh, you know, would, who would he still play the cold? I, I'm not sure. That's 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 true. That that was his go-to. That was his go-to. I I know cold definitely got nerfed since then. Yeah. Um, but you know, people have been grinding out. You know, different we'll setups. See. I wouldn't and, be surprised. Yeah, I mean, I we've surprised. seen Sonic Fox play a host of different characters. Yeah. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see anything in that one. Uh, some of the matchups that we know in losers, because not everything is entirely zipped up when it comes to the loser side. Exactly. Um, we know that, te that Tekken Master will play against Nubcakes. We know Infinity will play against Ominous. We know Rewind will play against Coach Steve. And the rest of it is still being ironed out. If you want to check it out yourself, you can go to smash.gg, go to click on CEO, and then click on Injustice 2, and you can see what's up. Yeah, you can do a little, you know, investigation, plugging in things where uh, the winner of who Correct. is meeting the loser of what pool and, uh, you know, what, what part of the bracket. But first on stream, we're going to have Echo Fox's Scar going up against Noble Tweety, the combo breaker champion of this year. That's right. The man who, with everything to lose, honestly, you know, a lot of pressure on him. But, you know, he's just a solid player, For man. For sure. Playing For sure. so much, playing every day and, you know, Usually streaming. Sometimes he likes. I feel like with Tweety, it's like, okay, do I want to get serious? All right, I'm not going to stream. Uh -huh. I'm going to do practice mode. Maybe run like a serious set with someone, and then he's like, oh, well, let's have some fun and also keep playing Injustice. Let me stream, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. crack jokes, make fun of people, and you know that's just that's just Tweety. There he is, there he walking is. up onto the stage as well as Scar in the Echo Fox orange. And for uh, for those of you who don't know, Tweety is. A trash talker, yeah. nothing but it. I For mean, sure. he's you know he, he doesn't really take it outside of the game, but it's more about you know just in gameplay. He's a very confident man when it comes to his skill level. Uh, you know, there was a lot of controversy around him uh, towards the end of MKX because you know he was he, he was making an appearance uh -huh. and you know really shutting people out towards the end of that game's lifespan but you know people are like oh well this is the end of the game's life right. you know no one plays this game anymore you're, you're really proud of nothing <laughs> and you know here he is again right now and i know for a fact all these people are still playing day in and day out constantly you know literally like just putting and dedicating so much time so much effort into this well, yeah. I, I'm, I'm really happy for Tweety that he did what he did at Combo Breaker, that he won the whole event. Of course, going, going into that, there was talk of him and Tekken Master having a money match. Tekken Master backed out, Controversial, saying yeah. that he wanted to concentrate on the tournament, right? And of course, the guy he backed out against ended up winning that tournament. So it's that, that was, I thought, for Tweety, basically the best case scenario. Not only does he win the tournament, but he blows up another guy in, in the process. Um, and yeah, he comes into this one still looking great. Oh, playing yeah. very well. He goes up against Scar, who also made top eight at Combo Breaker. So Scar getting seventh place at that event. Looking to do better than that this time. Yeah, He's got to take out Tweety to do it. Yeah, Scar, Scar's always been in there, always been in the picture. And, you know, it was a, it was a little surprising. Uh, you know, Scar, along with a few other really household names and, and really uh, competitive, competitively talented players uh, who weren't legacy uh, or returning uh, players. Right. Scar, you know, really not too much uh, in terms of, I mean, I'm sure he played in Justice 1, um, you know, maybe he's, a he's little a Mortal bit. Kombat player, right? But yeah, yeah. Def definitely an MK guy, you know, MK9. He was uh, an incredible, uh, one of the few Scarlet players out there. And then that's a very execution heavy character. Um, you know, we really didn't see him around in the Justice 1 days. MKX with that demo Sonya. Yep. 
phenomenal. And, you know, I honestly, I didn't think he would have as much success with this game just because he wasn't a returning okay. legacy player. You know, and then, you know, that's the truth. Uh, you know, but along with him, Dragon, and a few other players, like, it doesn't matter. You know, new game or not, legacy game or not, like, I'm going to put in my time. Right. And, and I'm going to outplay the opponent sitting next to me. So let's see if he can outplay the Combo Breaker champion here, Tweety. Tweety sticking with Starfire. Um, you know, if you, if you do follow Tweety on his Twitter, he does. Doesn't that sound perfect, Tweety on his Twitter? Yeah. Uh, he does. I, I feel like he, he slightly downplays this, uh, this character a little bit. I think bit. so, yeah. yeah. And, you know, I, I feel like that's safe to say. You know, she's very strong. Definitely not broken. No. No, 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 nothing like that. I just mean she's a very strong character. She has a lot of tools. For sure. She controls the screen very, very well. Definitely. Uh, and Scar rocking the Supergirl. Yeah, a character with some mobility. I can imagine her moving around Starfire's options. She has her own zoning and counter zoning options. That was sick. On that jump uh, down three, extending a little bit over much. And a nice toss there by Scar, okay. putting Tweety a little bit closer to the corner, and... Oh, no. I'm not air, sure. Right, I've got to think that was a drop. Yeah, no, definitely a drop. Tweety didn't have enough bar for an air escape, even if he wanted to do it. Ooh, Ooh the back three does trade. Luckily for Scar, he does knock Tweety down, but hold on, Tweety trying to make this comeback. Isn't it funny that both of these characters' character powers are, are, are both zoning tools? Yeah, it's true. Very, very different. Right. Uh, definitely different. Uh, you know, Starfire is more of like a, a zoning enhancing tool. Yeah. You know, she can either rock it raw or she can, you know, use it to extend combos, use it to extend projectiles. More of a dedicated zoner, whereas for Supergirl, she's just kind of a jack of all trades. Yeah. She can get in your face. She can, you know, keep the face nice and slow at full screen. Ooh, that's Ooh. amazing anti-air button. One of the best. Yeah, that back two. Got to be ready with it. And get out of there is Scar. He needs to take off the skin on this fish. Hasn't quite done it. Trying to move forward behind it. No. Oh, wow. Great spacing there by Scar. Making Tweety overcommit and overreach there where Scar was. Oh, okay. Tweety ends up getting a bunch of damage out of that. Moving forward very cautiously, but nevertheless doing so. And that finally is going to be the round. And that was a smart toss there by Scar. It kind of knew and, and fished out the fact that, that Tweety was just going to hold on to block and, and wasn't going to press a button here. Tweety taking the overhead here. Scar, as he comes down with the pile driver, the Tamaranian charge doesn't get him out of the corner like he had hoped. Okay. Well, we see a clash, and that's exactly what comes here. Tweety has two bars. Scar just the one. Just the one bar. Is he going to spend it? Okay. Tweety spending one bar for 15% of his health back. Rushing in here is Scar, all of a sudden on the ground approach. That's a lot of chip damage right there. Hold on, but gets, okay. can he make this happen? You know, one more good mix, well, honestly, maybe two more good mix-ups here for Supergirl. Okay, doesn't end up working. Ooh, called out the right wake up, Tweety. Guessing right when the chips were kind of not really on his side. Yeah. Everything was on the line, that would have been huge if Scar were to pull that upset. She does have a couple of different wake-ups you gotta look for, and they can both be dealt with. But you gotta look for which one's coming. Pushing her back. Okay, Great reactions punish. there. You know, that's the not, damage mounts. Look at this yellow. You know, a teleport like that is not too easy to sniff out in a, in a game where you have to hold back the block. Uh -huh. So, you know, that just shows you, you know, what kind of reactions Tweety has. Tried to get the whip punish, but he wasn't quite there. And then that's gonna get the chip. It's a very strong round right there by Tweety. In very much control, he's got the stage. He's got the big life lead. Okay, maybe not for long. Great call out there by Scar. Utilizing that Supergirl forward air dash to make sure he got on Tweety. Tweety with a delay wake up, avoiding the statue, avoiding the interact. Very smart. Great awareness. Harassing here in the corner. There's not a lot of strong mix-ups out of it, but he's just maintaining pressure. He's trying to get Scar to, you know, crack and, and, and press that down to Down to a little bit one of the riskier buttons here uh, in that situation. But, you know, I feel like Tweety did do what he wanted to do. And he, he said, okay, Scar's going to rely on the down two. He's going to disrespect me next time. So I'm just going to wait and probably punish it. Still trying to maintain some control, trying to meet a reaction, but no, not quite. 
Oh my god, the Wicked has been so consistent from Tweety. And as we said, we got, you got to mix up between the three that she has, but he's been doing it so well. It seems like everyone has worked. I guess he got punished once with the uppercut, but the rest was good. No, it definitely was. And, and you know, that first move before, you know, the, the, the overhead or the, the grab makes up, that first move does kind of like, per, it does hit as a high. So a down two and a down one is a great way to stop it if you're anticipating it. And, you know, that, that's really what Scar is doing. He's, he's anticipating and, you know, not, not specifically reacting to it, but really reacting to the situation. You know, Tweety is in that range where he wants to come in with that high attack. Let me get under it with my down two. Cool okay. Hops up there, just gets the statue. And Scar's playing it very patiently, not trying to, to initiate any kind of zoning game himself. And what side did that hit on Tweety? Cashing in lots of stuff, especially with this background bounce. So much damage here, right in Scar's oh, nice. face, and Scar just wakes up through it. Okay, yep, gets the overhead. But very little damage. He had bar. Might have not been it. No, that should have been a background bounce territory. Possibly looking oh, for that. Oh, that might have been yeah. what he wanted, yeah. All right. Okay, wow, what a whiff punish there. And that's match point now for Tweety. And right there, that's Tweety understanding how far Supergirl's back, uh, forward air dash is actually going to bring yeah. her. Right outside that range, go ahead, Scar. Press a button because I'm going to whiff punish you for it. Now, this is looking pretty heavily in Tweety's favor here. Complete control. Can Scar make this comeback? Can he make this happen? Okay. The round. Well, he's dropped this a couple of times. Ends up getting it. Yeah. Kind of a funky interaction. Yeah, I don't know, man. It, it, it was a little silly, but I, I feel like Tweety got out of the corner, which is what he wanted. Never okay. mind, as he just air dashes back into it. Tony value, <laughs> You definitely don't want to... Tell a Kryptonian to, to soak up some sun. That just makes them stronger. Right? Yeah. <laughs> just makes them stronger. Oh, the anti pair. Yeah, back to you. Such so a great good. normal. Mm -hmm. Trying to snipe a little bit from afar. Scar, the intention is not just the zone. He wants to get a knockdown and then move forward. Exactly. That is exactly what Scar sees. Uh, you know, couldn't really move forward there because of the, the Stardust in the way. But, you know, he, he's pushing Tweety a little bit closer to the corner and gets the throw. throw. Took the risk on it. The risky stuff there, as we saw earlier, him. Oh, here's it a chance. And that could have been a lot. Did you he... know, that really could have been a lot right there for Scar. It's a big drop for him. I'm, I'm not sure. I feel like Scar did have the meter there. Maybe he, he did. just didn't press it. Maybe he thought he didn't have the meter just yet. He had a lot of bar. I don't know. He's in big trouble right now. Starfire just trying to set up an inescapable chip situation. Okay. Alive, barely, but alive. The wake up is gonna do it, that 4-3 whiff, and that will be it. Tweety moves on, winner's side. That Tamaranian charge is so, such a strong tool in, uh, in Starfire's tool set. You know, it, it, it gets you out of a lot of block pressure if you're, if you're pressing it as a reversal. Now, obviously, there is a counter to it. If you know your opponent's gonna do it, you can meet him in the air. Uh, or even on wake up, you can really, as long as you have a nice normal that, that's out and active for a long right. time. It know, has some invincibility, but not a lot. No, I think, it, yeah, it's a it's, it's very, very tiny amount. So it's kind of, you know, what it is, is, is taking it to training room and really understanding, you know, what, where I can, you know, keep Starfire down once I knock her down on my setup. Yeah. And, you know, this game has a, has a great training room where you can set up. Uh, the character to tech roll, do the wake up attack, a uh, very specific wake up attack. You can, you know, have the character, uh, you can program the character to backdash on wake up. Uh, a lot of neat stuff here in the training room. And, and, you know, NRS has definitely delivered time and time again as the games have come out, just giving us more options, more accessibility, and just, just making it easier to really, you know, grind those matchups and really understand other characters. Uh, up here on stream, you see Biohazard. He's going to be going up against Deoxys. Biohazard making it out in the, his pool. I'm not sure who he had to play in uh, Winter's Finals. I believe it was either uh, Forever King or Illusions. It was uh, Illusions, yeah. Forever King actually lost to Illusions right before that. All right, so then Biohazard taking out his cousin, Illusions, <laughs> to be here right in front of Deoxys. Deoxys. The Blue Beetle Specialist, Texas Showdown winner and champion this year. Um, I, I was just saying in the last set how uh, Biohazard and Honeybee had me going for like three months that Illusions was their cousin. 
I really believe that was true. Because why not? I don't know. Why would you make that claim? You really wouldn't put it past them. But it's but, not. But, but they're, they, they, they love doing it. Yeah, they definitely do. Uh, Deoxys, I thought, you know, in his set versus uh, Rewind, had a lot of control versus Rewind's Firestorm, but then when, when Rewind went over to Blue Beetle, it looked a little bit different until the last game. Deoxys basically ran over Rewind. Yeah, yeah, he definitely, uh, you know, needed to just make a few adjustments. Yeah. Uh, you know, he understood what the game was, and I feel like, you know, Blue, Blue Beetle is very good, but I feel like right now a lot of people maybe just don't understand his tool set or don't understand what they're seeing when, you know, Blue Beetle is just running wild on you. Uh -huh. You know, you're just like, you don't know where the flight cancels are, you don't know where the gaps are, and, and a player like Deoxys is going to know. And he's like, okay, rewind, stick into this, let me expose whatever I can in whatever situation. Biohazard, one of the few fight stick players uh, <laughs> in true. the NRS community. And, I, you know, it, it, it's weird. I feel like Street Fighter is like the exact opposite, where it, most right, people yeah. play on stick yeah. and a lot of, and, and a few, a select few play on pad. Even Honeybee doesn't, right? No, Honeybee's Honeybee pad, right? Yeah. yeah, Honeybee is all pad. And just, just his brother, Biohazard. Just all right, here we go. The slow stick. approach for Biohazard. Wow, he waited and he saw the. Deoxys was grounded, so it goes for the grab. That's safe. But I love the dash. Oh, man. Great awareness there by Deoxys, so he knew exactly where he was on screen. Again, that is a problem, unfortunately, for Bane. <laughs> that is definitely going to be a problem, and I hope Biohazard's taking notes, and, you know, just in case he does lose this match, possibly going for a, a, a stage switch. Right. Deoxys, of course, wants to be back in the middle, doesn't want to find himself anywhere near the corner. Uh, Especially with, with that interactable. Bane. He can yeah. move a little bit more, harder to peck him down. Here we go, down two star. Not a, well, it's, I was gonna say not a, not a lot of damage, but it's Bane. Okay, down two. The dash cancel intended there by Biohazard did not work out. Oh, went over to the other side Ooh. and just waited for him, baited him out, out of the sky. And there, now here, this is not where you wanna be. Bane's got wow, armor. he used that string? I did never see a Bane use it, sick. I'm not sure if that was supposed to be, maybe he was just banking on the fact that Deoxys was gonna move. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's pretty weird. Uh, but like, you know, th there was no tick throw there. Like, no, you no cannot, it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, you cannot tick throw there, so not sure. Oh, oh my god. Can he, get, oh. he just needs one more hit. No, the low. It wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. Are we going to see wake up uppercut? Are we going to see wake up uppercut? No. There it is. Traded charge does the trick. I was just going to make a comment about how he pumped up Venom before Deoxys even jumped in. No. It's like he knew before oh, yeah. it even happened. <laughs> This Blue Beetle is jumping in. Gonna utilize some meter to extend the combo. Back three for the bounce and hold on. Oh boy, it hit. Oh, this is big trouble right now. This is, oh, yeah. oh that was gonna hurt. Oh my God. Yeah. It still hurts. Yeah, I'm right. <laughs> Two bars of peace and Biohazard decides to hold on to it because he knows a bounce cancel is really, really gonna be effective if he does finally get his hands on Blue Beetle. He's honestly just a few a few hits away from Yeah, death. if he finds one hit and then gets the right combo with the level 3 Venom, that's going to do it. That's going to be it. Level 2 Venom, you got to watch that character power. You can see it right there on the bottom of the screen. Okay. Goes for the uppercut, oh disrespecting boy. that gap. Oh, boy. It's going to hurt. It, it is hurting. Oh, 625. And then the air right there, he has to go for the Clash to stay alive. But so much more meter on Deoxys' side, he can force this to be almost the end for Biohazard. You cannot absorb anything. Yeah, that's going to be it. It was, it was it was, the hard read, and that's what Biohazard went for, uh, you know, right after knocking him down. He thought Deoxys might have jumped away, but I, I think the main reason he went for that option is because he that was the only thing that was going to come out fast enough, do enough damage, while level three was still active. You know, it was just timing down. It was like almost nothing left, and it's just one big hit. So it is, it is a stage switch right there for Biohazard. As you said, I think that's the right call. You don't get to choose which stage, but you can go to a random one. That's what he did. Yeah, no, that, that's that's definitely the, 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 the right call. Pulling up the interactables while he can. Slow walk back by Deoxys, trying to just time out that Venom. He's done so at least for level one. Oh, wow. Movement right there is perfect by Deoxys. Just consistently excellent movement, spacing, knowing when to control. Here it is. Wake up. That was, that was fireball wake up. Oh, oh okay. that's going to hurt. That's going to hurt. Oh, he even spent two bars, and it didn't matter at all. 
plus. Oh, moving it though. Just respected it. Deox is ready to swing right afterwards. <laughs> Look at that very slow level three debuff slowly come back. And Deox has threatened the approach. No. And, and I feel like even though that, that level three debuff, that level three withdrawal was, was, was active, you know, he didn't really make a move. He just kind of, he's okay with playing it the way Biohazard wants to play it, you know? Whip punish, nice. And we're gonna extend this combo here. No air escaper, but by Biohazard. Biohazard, yep. Oh, he moves forward. That's gonna be the round, just like that. Just almost instantly it's over. Bane has two bars. You're, you're yeah, dead. No, it's over, yeah. <laughs> you're dead. Who <laughs> tried to command grab? What a gutsy fellow. I mean, I feel like he, even because of the, because he had such low life right there in that last situation, he didn't want to go for uppercut because he knew the armor wasn't going to be enough, yeah. uh, you know, to withstand the hit. So I, I guess I, I see why. I thought this is a little bit of a methodical player. And, and I'm seeing it a lot in his decision making, you know, you know, play by play. Yeah. And Bane, although he's a mix-up character, he, he takes risk, but basically only with that. Like, other than with the overhead elbow, there's not a lot of r actual risk in Bane's gameplay. Stocked on meter is Deoxys. Okay, tried it, stabbed it, down two! Oh, that hurts on classical well, stuff here. A little bit of punish! And then instantly, the Clash did not want to take that damage. Two bars back for Deoxys Bow Hazard keeping his. He's on debuff. No, back in there. He was hoping to see the shield bash. It didn't come. Boy, if that had happened, that yeah, might have been the end of it. That would have been clear as day, the end of the game. But Bow Hazard utilizing his two bars. Deoxys using one bar to kind of, you know, to kind of put a stop to Bow Hazard getting some health back. Oh, huge! Maybe the end! Is that enough? Is that enough? It is! I that can't was meterlessly! Meterless kill! A meterless kill right here in the corner. Biohazard knew he just needed that one opening, that one setup. As he was jumping, he was at level one Venom. He recognized the situation instantly. Level three Venom, major damage. Gotta love those hit confirms. So much damage here. And Deox is not feeling good about that one. He knew he <laughs> barely let that escape. That should have been his game. And Biohazard just keeping his composure, keeping calm in the situation, and just going play by play until he finds the win here. The tick throw, the armor through the venom. Okay. Oh, he actually gets a punish. Few characters do. Back three here. Slow approach. Oh my gosh, he just went for it. Yep. Can we talk about how great Bane is with a background bounce in the air? Oh my god, Biohazard does not want to give up on anything. He wants to control everything he can. He called that out! Oh my god! Oh. He knew exactly what Deoxys' game plan was. Deoxys sees down two, thinks, okay, tick grab coming, fine, I'm going off the wall. Biohazard had the counter all lined up. Just waiting for his moment, waiting to go, and here we go, the bait out from Deoxys. He's gonna make this hurt. He's in the corner, no restand. Hoping to see a jump didn't come. And funky interaction, actually Bane ends up out of it? That's and one of those weird times where they don't get separated. Yeah, yeah and they're right next to each other. <laughs> Deoxys going straight for the low attack here. I'm sorry, the, the down light attack. And what a whiff punish here by Deoxys. <laughs> <laughs> two bars there for Biohazard. He still has two. Still very dangerous. Biohazard trying to make his way in, just inching in, just, you know, utilizing that walk speed from Bane. But we're okay. dashing whenever he has the opening. Okay. Overhead right there. The cross up! Oh boy! And that was a punish to the Oh my god. He clashed finally. Three to two, I think, on meter. Yeah, Bane has more. He spent all three. He spent all three. He wants to make sure it hurts. No longer susceptible to the glitch from Injustice 1. Bane can actually do damage in the Clash animation. Hits him with the supercomputer and snatches wow. him out of the air. Oh, Hoping. it wasn't enough? No, it wasn't. Looking for Can't anything. Can't get ahead of himself. I think he's kind of getting ahead of himself. You see him dashing. 
there it is though. Level three, you got that forward two down, you're just the wall moving forward. I think Biohazard just wanted to to, to, uh, to go through the projectile. He wanted to yeah. display that nice uh, property that Bane's level three Venom has. Now everyone knows that Bane's level, uh, levels of Venom give him hits of armor, but when he's in level three, he actually doesn't take any hits from projectiles. Just so, ignores them. Just ignores them. Whip punish. Nice. Here's the Oxus now. Oh, could have gotten a little bit more. What a back off. No punish. Deoxys now in trouble. Oh, hitting him before he gets nice. on the wall. The down two. I love how ready he was for that cross up jump three intention right there. What side was that on, David? I what don't know. Side? What are you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Leaving him in a standing position. Very dirty stuff here. Chuck in the interactables, trying to Ooh. get some kind of hit. Background bounce oh. wasn't in play just yet. All right, level three, level three Venom. Oh my God, it's damage. It's damage city here, but Biohazard's got to back off. He is in debuff. He is susceptible to more damage as he comes oh, down yeah. from that, that, that Venom. I'm glad to see Deoxys move forward and actually find the hit on that. As you're saying, that's, a, that's when Bane is most worried. He does not want to get touched during debuff. Takes so much more damage when he's in that. Here's a punish. And he does it with just one bar and one venom. Nice little elbow drop there to just, uh, you know, make sure and ensure that that charge does hit. What, where did he was so far away for a second? Oh, nothing there. Oh, he did get it. Even though it was out of the air, it still worked. Jax just takes it all, no flash. All right, very nice. Jax is out of the corner. He's got some damage that he's dealing right now. A little bit of debuff there time. And he clashed. You know, if he had waited like 0.5 seconds longer, his Venom would have been fully recovered. He wouldn't start after this on debuff. But no big deal, it's just level one. Just level one. Yeah, not too bad. And I think even maybe Biohazard just wanted to reset the situation. Possibly just get the meter off of Blue Beetle. Mm -hmm. But down two. Does convert it after the command grab whiffs. No attempt on the anti-air. Beetle has really good jumpers. Oh my god! Oh, and it's yeah. a Alpha Jet! How many times do we see him? Bio Biohazard dumps damage onto Deoxys, and he moves on. He will face Tweety in the next round. In, I'm sorry, top eight. That is going to be top eight. So Tweety has qualified for top eight. Biohazard has qualified for top eight, both in winners. And they're both going to be facing off uh, against each other tomorrow at 2.30, I believe the stream starts for uh, top eight. 2.30 Eastern Standard Time, and there's uh, there Biohazard getting some props from his brother, possibly trying to take some, some of that positive energy as he sits down to play D.R. Gross, straight from the Dominican Republic. Gross is here to play, always a competitor, even, you know, he, he's been a veteran. He's been a threat yeah. in the NRS scene from as far back as the MK9 days when he was here. Fresh off the boat from the DR. And, you know, Honeybee, uh, a little bit of more of a newcomer. I would say, you know, Honeybee and Bio are technically, you know, new school guys. I mean, like the like, mid end of Injustice 1, they, yes. were, they, they were playing at that time. They were. It, it was definitely the second half of Injustice 1. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, they, they don't have that legacy from MK9. No, that, that they were Gross not MK9, yeah. You know, Gross, a lot of close friends who, who have the, those roots that are instilled from MK9 or before. Yeah. And, you know, Honeybee and, and Biohazard, you know, all started off just as, they started off as viewers just like yourselves. And, you know, they said, you know, I, I can put in the time. I think I'm talented. Let me, let me go and compete. And I believe their first tournament was at East Coast Throwdown. Okay. For Injustice 1. They took a bus all the way from Canada to New Jersey. Okay. And, uh, you know, they, they got to meet everyone. They had a great time. And, uh, and it looks like to me they're, they've they been hooked ever since. Yeah. In the Two FG of the best players in the scene, though. Yeah. In the FGC family forever. As Older David says, you never leave. I'll see you at the next one. Every <laughs> <Yeah>. time someone <laughs> someone says they're going to leave the FGC, they never <laughs> yeah. leave the FGC. So Gross's year uh, has been good so far. He did really well at Combo Breaker. Uh, what did he get? Second place overall in that. Yeah, he, he got he got second place at Combo Breaker, and I feel like the the Sonic Fox factor is that 
whenever you defeat Sonic Fox, which doesn't really happen, it takes so much out of you that you cannot keep going. So because Gross defeated Sonic Fox and losers, he kind of, you know, sat on that grenade <laughs> and, and stopped Sonic Fox from winning the tournament. That's right. And here we go, Honeybee, that patented flash gameplay here. Wow, the trade definitely working out there for DR Gross. Much better in his favor. Tried to get through something, nothing came. And just like that, Honeybee is back into it. The escape, well, right back into the mix. A well-timed escape, but the very scary thing about the, you know, trying to air escape against the Flash is that even if he can't get close enough to punish you, you probably have to hold an overhead or low pick up right, yeah. into more damage. So, you know, usually not my go-to. I'd rather have it for, you know, push block <laughs> to, to, to get him away. And, you know, it's, but, you know, Gross off to a great start here, yeah. or I guess, you know. Comeback of his own. Yeah, definitely a comeback of his own, running away with that health bar. Hitting him with that black magic here. He did have meter actually when it hit. Does now. Oh, he was hoping to see the approach. Nothing came up from Honeybee. Oh, here's Gross. I mean, even. Didn't have trade. Yeah, even when that speed force is activated, that move is still very, very right? fast. That's and very crazy. forward advancing. Okay. Oh, I don't know what's playing on the jukebox here, but Gross definitely knows now. And Gross is looking pretty good. Honeybee has a lot of meters. Yeah, three, I think to zero for Gross. So it's whatever Honeybee wants. Two. Two bars, definitely good. Especially 25%. Holding, holding on to that one bar. Sure. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Trying to approach, but Gross is super ready. Oh, this one's gonna hurt. Yeah, it's bad news right now for Honeybee. He stays alive, but really not for much longer. He cannot get touched. And so that is gonna do it. That's gonna do it. The win button and the snap of his fingers here. Uh, DR Gross making that comeback. It looked like Honeybee was in control at first, and you know, the, the tides kind of changed. Gross in the driver's seat, and Honeybee contemplating the character select screen. Now, this is the, fla the, the, the Flash God okay. board. Yeah, but he does play other characters, and, and Starfire is one of them, Fate is one of them. He's gone for Starfire here. So a character who can, you know, she's uh, she's got zoning control. One thing I like about his characters that he plays is that he has Flash, super offensive character, and his others tend to be more zoner style. He's trying to complement the different matchups, and I think this makes sense here. No, yeah, that's definitely the best way to describe it. Com uh, complimenting those, those those troublesome matchups, yeah. those things where Flash just really just, just can't hang. And right now, looking good for Honeybee. Pressuring a little bit, nicely done. Still in there, dang, he just melted that life bar. That was, that, that was <laughs> a Super shocker. I, I, I can't believe how fast and how dominant that round was for Honeybee. Wow. It gross. That jump actually was so floaty that he was over the back too. That's crazy. Somehow got over that back two here. And now Gross is in the driver's seat trying to make a comeback of his own. Meterbird forward three in the Temerity charge. It is safe here, folks. Pushing him away. Chucking the stone bench here. Black Adam just nice. blocks it with his forearms. Right out of the air. Great call by Honeybee. This time Gross approaches. Hoping to see something he can take advantage of. But excellent defense right now by Honeybee. Blocked. Didn't tech the grab, just was patient. Now he's got control again of the screen. Okay. Just chipping him out here. There you go. So Gross alive. But two bars on Honeybee's side. Out of the air. And just harassing all that chip at this stage of the game. That's a big deal. It definitely is. Hold on, the call out from Gross. What a read here. Knows that Honeybee was going to resort to the zoningness. No wake up right there. Honeybee was patient, and that's gonna do it. And I thought Very Gross fast player switch. What is it gonna be for Gross? You, you know, see, I, sometimes maybe he goes to Lantern. Yeah, he usually goes to Green Lantern. Uh, maybe a little bit more. Never mind. I was gonna say maybe a little bit more presence with the lift. Uh, you know, not the best projectiles, but I think he he can hang. But Gross sticking with Black Adam. Um, you know, I feel like maybe in this matchup, or maybe in this match here specifically, he might want to utilize a little bit more of that, that meter burn foot dive. Uh, you know, it does reach, go full screen, and, and it usually does clear over projectiles, no problem. But, you know, Honeybee's being very cautious about when he's zoning. You know, this isn't just a brainless act. He is being very meticulous, very particular about when to press those zoning buttons. 
And her trade's super good, but you have to think about when to use it, you know? Is it important enough to spend on any one moment or not? There's, there's a lot of uh, interesting questions, I think, that go into playing the character. Wow, the range was huge. He knew, he just knew. He knew he was gonna take to the sky, possibly looking for that foot dive and just meter burning it to, to take advantage of those plus frames. Out of there. Oh, okay. Black magic into the meter burn gives Gross a chance here. He's gotta get a lot more though. Gross is a jump into here. Honeybee battles, still moving. There's, uh, you know, a super, I don't think Rose would spend super, yeah, I think it's more important to get meter back. Or yeah. get life back, excuse me. Yeah, no, it's definitely more important to kind of spread out your, your utility and spread out your resources here. It's Gross uh, goes for the for the clash and gets 25% back. Now giving him a little bit more wiggle oh, okay. room. Foot dive. The timing was so good. A little bit of damage afterward, but better than what would have would have happened. Great right, decision gross. there. Yeah, great decision. I, I feel like a lot of Black Adam players might have not used the meter, but when you're trying to make this comeback, you can't let them have anything on the table. Hey, there's Honeybee just looking for the jump. He was right. Spins his way in. Okay, down two. Gross getting the side switch even. Will there be a wake up? It's been a pretty slow uh, wake ups for Honeybee. He has it's rarely done so. Well, I feel like uh, Gross hasn't really put Honeybee in too many situations, right. you know, where, where you know, you, uh, an opponent would oh, want nice. to wake up. You know, Honeybee's more more interested in playing the neutral, more interested in playing the full screen game, but Gross very close Ooh. to making this comeback! I mean, he was way down in life, too. Now it's looking a lot better for him. Doesn't finish, so he gets a better situation. Push block right into the face. No meter right now for Honeybee. There it is. Not fast enough here. Push and block and it's, oh, is that gonna do it? Yeah. No, he wanted another one. He may have overextended. Gross, is he gonna get it? He does. Down two saves the day for Gross. And Gross back with that patented down two play. He loves doing it. He talks about it time and time again, how players just don't think he's going to do it. And, you know, he's so good at, at timing it perfectly and just shoving that down two down your throat. Well, his delay before then, that to miss the jump three was perfect. So really good understanding of what was needed at the moment. He starts off this one with the life advantage now. That forward advancing mid does wonders there, but Starfire tries to do a lot of the Stardust shenanigans. You really can, uh, you know, just advance and, and hit her and punish her out of a lot of things. It really shows you how much time and effort uh, Gross has put into understanding these Starfire setups. <laughs> Dealing some damage from afar, not a ton, that's punish. Not really sure what Honeybee was looking for there. Just kind of, I don't know, I feel like he just kind of gave it away with the Tamaranian charge. Gross is in and just mauling at this point. Honeybee trying to play patiently. Getting some damage here. Has some trait and he spends it, but no meter. Okay, it was a little later, I think, than Gross thought that Honeybee would jump. Yeah, and I feel like Honeybee was waiting for that jump, uh, that down two, but really just waiting for any kind of movement at all. Saw him flinch, press the button, and you know, that's just the kind of player Honeybee is. Right, oh, Black Magic has a meter here. Keeping it unclashable. There's a lot of damage on this. Swing oh, around. this might be it. Is that it, this last little hit? Not enough. But that's that will do enough. that. What are you gonna do about that? Or maybe, is it gonna be okay? Will he make it? No! When you have so much meter to complement that unblock the, those unblockable orbs, it's really tough to get around. He's got meter burn foot dive, which gives him a you know a, an easy way in. He's got meter burn roll, you know meter burning the forward dash into a roll, getting right in his opponent's face. Uh, you know I just didn't see that panning out too well for Honeybee after that transition. Yeah. Down to nothing against a character like Black Adam. Yeah. That's a death sentence here. Well, Honeybee tried to run in with Starfire, just didn't end up working out for him. So now Gross will move into winner's side top eight. And the last winner's top eight to be decided is between Noble Samij and Echo Fox, Sonic Fox. Echo Fox, Sonic Fox. I mean, what? What can you really say about this player that hasn't already been said? He, here's what I'll say about Sonic Fox. He got third place at Combo Breaker 2018. 
and it's not that he's won every tournament since he started playing NRS games, but like he's won most of them. A lot of them, yeah. And uh, when he got third place last month, you know, I thought it must have been in part because he was really training so hard for Dragon Ball Fighters. I, I feel like he might have let this side of things go down a little bit for him. And so for the remainder of the IPS season, especially today, I feel like he's going to come here ready to play, uh -huh. having studied up, being sure of himself again. I, I feel like this that might have been a wake-up call to him and, and that he's going to come back even stronger here. You see, he's, he's not even in furry mode. He's in, like, maximum... Sonic, like he's in super serious mode. He, he definitely is. Usually he's rocking some kind of furry headband or some, some, some furry gloves. No. Or at least a tail. Right. Nothing. Nothing today from Sonic Fox. Maybe he's just saving it for top eight. Could be. Could be. Could be saving it for top eight. Not saying that he's going to make, he's a shoe in for top eight, but. If he I, wins this one, he'll make top eight. He will. He will. Uh, is he going to be the mirror match? Is he playing Catwoman? Sonic Fox has done this before. Uh, I believe. Uh, the first few War of the Gods where Sonic Fox was, was competing, I think he, he did play some Age with his Catwoman. He said, I'm going to beat you with your own character. Wow. Um, you know, but I don't know if that's such a smart thing to do. I mean, you know. We saw him playing Red Hood earlier, and he looked pretty good. Well, he was, he was playing Red Hood against uh, Big D, and that was a specific that was a specific request by Big D through Twitter saying, Please pick Red Hood. Really? Because I will beat that character and Sonic Fox says, you're crazy. Oh, sure. What? Here you go. Oh my god. So Big D had all the preparation time in the world and <laughs> it didn't help. In tournament. It didn't help. <laughs> okay, well it's gonna be the mirror after all, Sonic Fox and the slightly browner version, I guess. Kind of a funky green brown. Yeah, you know, it's a meach rocking the, uh, the, the the purple, the purple latex. And uh, Sonic Fox, uh, I, I feel right away, I see what this Catwoman is doing. A little bit more heavy on like the Oki setup. You know, going in for those ambiguous jumping ones right after knockdowns. Oof, the tech. Gorgeous. I love how they're walking in and out of each other's jump two ranges, each, uh, each other's whip ranges. This is a really interesting little footsies battle here. Neither one wanting to overcommit. They both had the same idea. Sonic Fox stabbing in a little bit here. Down two, maintaining control. And boy, he took that life bar. It was not fast, but he only took chip damage. You know, Samij thought it was his turn to swing, and Sonic Fox is like, nope, here's the back of my heel. Now we have the switch, but jump one actually works. I thought that Samij wanted that spot on screen. Didn't end up mattering. Sonic Fox building the life lead even still. Here's the clash. All right, three to two bars. What's Sonic Fox gonna do? He bets it. He said, you know what? I don't care. I don't need this meter. Yeah, when you have a life lead like that, what does that what does meter mean, right? Just well, I don't here, see why not. Yeah, well, Sonic Fox getting a meter of his own here, thanks to the damage he took from Samij opening him up here, looking for the low Sonic Fox. Not oh giving it to him the instant jump one off that interactable. <laughs> That's wild. Here's Sonic Fox. Delay into backdash. And Samich finding the hit. Yeah, delay into backdash is definitely a great option to, to really throw out. You know, the backdash is going to give you invincibility frames no matter what, and the delay is going to kind of mess up your opponent's timing. Hopefully, you catch him overreaching and you, you get to, to get him on the recovery. But, you know. Uh, Samich really making way with it and trying okay. to make this comeback. He is starting to do it. Yeah, he's starting to whiff punish, putting himself in good spots. Sonic Fox knew exactly when Samich would walk into that whip range. Crazy. Here's Samich now trying to pressure. Yes, gets the grab. He needs more, though. Is Sonic Fox going to choke this up? Is Samich going to run away with this? Is he going to make this comeback? Sonic Fox at least has another, uh, still has Clash. Well, can't really even take chip at this point. You got yeah, a push block. Go. Forced to push block. Nothing wrong with that. And uh, definitely a great last resort there by Samij. Backs off. Doesn't want anything to do with Sonic Fox. And here comes that cat dash. Samij <laughs> smiling the about smile. it. Yeah, it's a risk, of course. Samij could have jumped back at that moment and gotten the punish. But that's not what happened. Sonic Fox guessed right. I think Samij is just, you know, in, in shock that Sonic Fox is doing this to him with his own character. And, uh, you know, I, I don't believe it either. I thought this was a very risky move yeah. by Sonic Fox, but he's 
He's in control, man. He looked real strong. Positionally, mix-ups were good. Everything worked out. I definitely think you're right about you know him not winning combo breaker really being that wake-up call to him and yeah. him saying like, okay, it's early, I can fix this now, and I'll be okay. Yeah. And there with the Ooh. sweep, going over the other side, or at least it made it look like it. I don't think that was a cross-up. I don't think it was. Spends it, still gets pressure as a result. And then backing off here, Samij. Ooh. Good spacing by Sonic Fox, though. Great blocks. Individual little hits right now will matter a lot as they both try to figure out who gets the first significant hit after that series before. Neither one going for the jump too. Okay, here's Samij now and finds the moment. Just as Sonic Fox was trying to come in himself. Oh, this is some scary stuff here. Catwoman in that jump back two range when you're up against the corner. Very tough stuff. A very this is pretty much jail. It's just so yeah. hard to get out of the corner, so hard to block your way out. Samid's trying to keep control here. Not really over committing, but you know, back dashing. Ooh, very nice by Samij. I think he had that that concept and that idea in his head yeah, for a while. And, you so, know, yeah. it was just a matter of time before Sonic Fox was forced okay. to, to, to really go in range of that bomb. Hoping to get through something there with Sonic Fox, but instead Samij finds another hit. And as strong as Sonic Fox looked in the first game, Samij is just taking absolute control of this game. Interrupting even with a lot of damage as a result. But Sonic Fox, let's see what he gets here. Needs more. I love that little side switch there by Catwoman jumping in and just denying her access to that interactable. What a whiff punish! Overextending is Sonic Fox. Now the clash comes with three and three. We'll see what Samij does. Three for both! Three for both. Both players just getting really aggressive here. Samij trying to take anything from Sonic Fox and the off chance that he wouldn't what? use that last bar. Okay. And he spends it. He's got all the scratches available. But Samij, of course, still has the clash. And that's going to do it. I think we're going to see, yeah, we're absolutely going to see a character switch. Sonic Fox laughing about it, saying, you know what? Maybe I don't need to beat him with his own character. Maybe okay. I'm going to go to Captain Cold, Ultra David, called it out perfectly before. Well, this is the character that he used when they played a lot last season. Cold got hurt a little bit. I think he got a couple of minor buffs in there, too. So he's a little bit of a different character, but same game plan. And that game plan works well against Catwoman. It does, mainly because she really has no no way to get around the snow globe. Now right. you gotta pay attention to Captain Cold's character power there. It's him loading up his gun. When it gets to level two, that's when he shoots out the snow globe, the snow dome. But and it hasn't even come up at all. He has no. not charged up even a bit of that meter. He's got a lot of work to do left. Hasn't touched, well, he's touched her, I guess, but hasn't actually hit. Samid's not Look giving Sonic Fox the opportunity okay. here. Hold on. He is in control. What's going on over there on Sonic Fox's side? Settles himself down a little bit, puts the puddle in front of him, and he's just going to... The range. He knew it. He knew it. He said, you the can't range. even block this. You can't even block this whip. That is a poorly placed puddle here yeah. by young Sonic Fox. The down two to snipe him out of the sky. This is a no-fly zone. Get out of the air and onto the ground. Ooh, God, that setup is so strong. If you try to do a wake-up, she'll just block, just land a block. Oh my god, this is embarrassing Do here. Do you see the life bar on Samija's side? I can't believe it. He, all he's taking is two hits of chip. That's it. Captain right. Cold gets 25% life back, but who even cares compared to what Samij has? Sonic Fox has to play so that he just doesn't get touched. I mean, this, he has to snowball the whole way. I mean, he, he can't let anything get by him at this point. The freeze happens. The push block was not quite well timed. So, oh, that was a huge drop there. Doesn't get the back row bounce. Watch. Sonic Fox is gonna regret that. Hold on, the ice okay. bottle here. Leveling it up. He's gotta get to that level two again. He's not doing so. He gets a hit, a little lucky. In there, yeah, that's the life bar. Okay, somehow Sonic Fox is still alive. Oh, well, that's it. 
No air escape, no clash available to Sonic Fox, and Samij taking it with a supreme victory oh here. Oh my god, it was a blow up. I mean, it ended up being respectable for Sonic Fox. He ended up taking the life bar, but before that, it was dominance. So he's gonna just ditch that guy and go over to Red Hood. Three completely different characters for all of his choices. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you really don't see that too much in a lot of games. You know, what What player can really hop from character to character and still feel comfortable, still, you know, have a, have a full understanding of, of, of the spacing in that character, the normals, and, and just the overall matchup and gameplay? No whiff punish there. Here's a chance. Sonic Rock's getting a little bit. Did not go for the meter burn uh, on the mine there. Instead, just back to the footsies game, controlling things a little bit. I love the escape by the Smeej right there. That was plus, yeah. And uh, that string just keeping Smeej at full screen as Sonic Fox just dives in, you know, eliminating that real estate and pushing Smeej a little bit closer and closer to this corner. Backing off here, Sonic Fox. Hoping to see that Smeej will overcommit. That's rarely Smeej's game plan. Goes for the low on that. See if he goes for it. Okay, the low, yeah. Out of the air, not the rest. And again. again. But you know what? He's really not getting too much damage out of there, so there really was no reason for Samid not to do it again uh, for the second time. If you, if you, oh, he thought the lunge was going to beat him. Are we going to see an air kick off of the. No, we're going to end the lunge. Lunge is so fast, yeah. right in your face. No need to respect anything uh, when you have a special move that acts the way lunge does. Right. Knock down here, there'd be a wake up, nothing. Trying to get out of there just as Samij did. Sonic Fox not trying to escape. Okay. Air escape, no punish. Overhead this time. Oh yeah, okay, he didn't finish the string. Very clever. Going over the other side, looking for the cross up and just not finding the opening here. Samij slamming that whip, cracking it here, trying to find Sonic Fox and Sonic Fox just not leaving himself open, keeping up his defense. The hit. Okay, as Samij. As soon as I said it, as soon as I said <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah, it, yeah. he just eats the jump in two. It's match point Samij, but right now it feels like he's got a lot of work to do. Even Chip at this point, see Sonic Fox is going for that. But he doesn't have bar, and as a result, oh, what? We're sniffing it out, man. He, like I said, when a red hood has you down to almost nothing, that? if he's got meter, the lunge is coming. You can almost bet on it. And Sonic Fox here with the equalizer, tying up the set two to two, bringing Samij down to game five. Is Samij gonna stick it out with Catwoman, or is there a counter pick that we might not know about? Now, I don't think that this is a good idea. Uh, you know, this Big, is what Big D did. Yes, Big, Big D did play this matchup. And Big D's like, you know, I, I got this, and Sonic Fox uh, was in control. That, that was a clean 3-0, no problem there. He understands Ivy. Sonic Fox actually thinks that Ivy is a really good character now. Okay. Well, that's exactly what Samij is going to go for. Now, Big D's been playing Ivy the whole time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For Samij, is this a relatively recent pickup for him? Well, Samij did bust out this IV uh, on, on War, I want to say War of the Gods, either this week or last okay. week, uh, in order to steal a win. Uh, apparently, it was a favorable matchup in Ivy's favor, and that's why he kind of went with it. So I, we're definitely going to see a great IV. You okay. know, definitely no slouch here. Understands the gameplay here. Uh, Pukey out on the screen. Bark. Uh, bark on a... <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, barf on her. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, to, to really reduce the any kind of chip damage yeah. that she could uh, possibly take. Oh, very nice. Try to get a little bit more damage, but the drop, and so backing off, she'd rather just control space. Doesn't have mix-ups up close, but that moves back. She's got one of the best, like, forward threes in this game. Kind of oh, like yeah. Batman, where it just kind of throws herself forward. She, she closes the gap. But, that you running know, forward three. Yeah, yeah. But really, what, what Sonic Fox is doing against Big D, every time Big D went for it, Sonic Fox, yo, on reaction. On reaction, carrying it here. Wow. Because he, he didn't have the bar to meet him with a meter burn back three. He would definitely rather meter burn back three that move. Easily, no questions asked. All right. It's match point Sonic Fox. Didn't go for the rest of that string right there. Samij would have whiffed it. 
and still in here now. It should be the life bar as well. So we're gonna go down to the final life bar here for both players. Noble Samich, Echo Fox, Sonic Fox, one of them makes winner's side top eight. The mine is down, Samich gets out of there, but does eat the Gotham Stars here. Just Trying patience. To... Now Samich looking for the opportunity to summon his trade, to summon Pukey here, where he can yeah. just kind of, then there it is. Yeah. As long Harassment. As, as long as Samich doesn't get hit, Pukey will stay there for a little bit uh, until the end of the, the, the timer. Oh, 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 it did work. The meter burn forward three from downtown. Such great range and a great combo starter all together. Sonic Fox spends two of his three, and now he's got the screen to control if he can. Long time until that trade comes back on Ivy's side. Way too far away. And what and a Samich finds that. I love that he ended up with this to get close again, get more damage out of it. Sonic Fox trying to get in there. Oh, Sonic Fox might be in trouble right now. He's Here. in a lot of trouble right now. Fuki got to be adding nice. so much chip damage. A beautiful throw there by Samij. Okay, meter burns it. It was fast. Does connect. Sonic Fox hits the low. In a little bit. Keep in mind, Samij still has his clash available. This is such an intense oh, situation. Oh, two bars! Semi just chipping. There oh, it is! Oh, That's no. gonna do it! Semi sends Sonic Fox the loser's bracket. And Semi really feeling himself right after that, especially considering that first game in that entire set. That was Sonic Fox beating Semi with his own character. Right. Semi had enough mental strength to shake it off, say, you know what, that wasn't me that first game. Let it roll right off, and Ooh. I will make this comeback. And he does, Samij, moving on in top eight winners over <laughs> Sonic Fox. Now, you yeah. got to be careful, though. Remember, we got that Sonic Fox curse. Is Samij, mm. does he still have anything left in the tank? I'm sure it took so much out of him. Hey. He's, guys, he's at least got until tomorrow to hang out, right? Yeah, yeah. He's got, he's got some time to, to, to charge his batteries. But, guys, right. don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to have... Deoxys going up against Tekken Masters, so stay right. Hey, all right, welcome back to CEO 2018. We're in top 24, but we know who's in winner's side of top eight. That is going to be Tweety versus Biohazard and Gross versus Samij. Now, now we have to figure out what's up in losers. We do have to figure out what's going on in losers uh, as we move down. This is a losers match. As we saw Deoxys uh, losing to Biohazard a little earlier today. Uh, now he finds himself in the lower bracket. If you guys aren't familiar with how double elimination works, uh, it's pretty much the standard uh, here in this country, at least, for uh, fighting games. Uh, you have to lose twice to be out of the tournament completely. After you lose your first life, you're going to be playing up in the lower bracket against other people who have lost their first life. So this is the lower bracket, a lot more on the line. Now, the loser of this is eliminated from the tournament, yeah. and has to go home salty. That for sure. <laughs> so we know a little bit about what's occurred so far in loser's side. Tekken Master beat Nubcakes and must also have qualified through Buffalo versus whoever he was going to play against to now play against Deoxys. Burrito Voorhees beat Forever King. Oh my god. <laughs> the br and it was a 3-0 according to this bracket. I According mean, to this bracket. You know what? Sometimes they record it as 3-0, but it wasn't. But I hope that's the case. I hope that was the case, too. No, Burrito Voorhees has been putting in his time. And, you know, Forever King, he's... Those are their brothers, by the way. They, they are. Yeah, Burrito Voorhees. Forever Borges. King is the older brother and has long been the shadow cast Burrito over Burrito Voorhees. And for a while, Burrito Voorhees used to just sign up as Forever King Jr. Yeah. Which is the name that I know you miss. <laughs> well, I don't know that I love that name, but Burrito Voorhees doesn't need to okay. be the, the okay. secondary option. Let, so. let's, let's, let's give Voorhees his, his props. <laughs> yeah, but for sure. Yeah, no, definitely taking it over his brother is, I would say, a huge upset. Uh, yeah, that's you know, awesome. To this day, I think even at, uh, at final round, Forever King just kind of always had a handle on his brother. He knows he's like, I've been playing you longer than anyone else. I know your tendencies. Um, but I, I do know that in the, within the last year, uh, I don't believe they live in the same household anymore. So, you know, I'm sure Breeder Voorhees has expanded as a player, maybe pricked up a few new tricks here and there that Makes Forever sense. King just wasn't ready for. But Deox is here off to a great start against Tekken Master. Tekken Master going to Brainiac and Deoxys with, of course, 
his blue beetle as he is a blue beetle specialist here. Looking for that down two, doesn't Look at get this. it. Great blocks though by Tekken Master. You know, that's really good defense right there. I love the offense and some of that's executionally difficult too, but awesome defense by Tekken Master to just hang out. And that, that was a great move there by uh, Tekken Master, getting that interactable out of play as he saw how pesky Deoxys was being with it, <laughs> using the invincibility frames as you jump off of it. Here we go, the hard knockdown into the corner, chucking that free chip damage. Plate of coals. <laughs> he's been, he's been like jumping a with that jump one a few times. He's hoping to just catch Deoxys in the air. And of course, you get the dive kick afterward. Deoxys has similar options, but just hasn't brought it in the same moment. Here's a punish. Oh, look at that. No, just oh, he didn't, have he didn't have the meter. No, look at him just dancing around beautifully with that trade, but this might be it for Tekken Master's first bar as Deoxys utilizing those two bars to make sure that it kills in that situation. Tekken Master not finding himself in too much of a, of a pickle here. No, but. he can kill very quickly. Oh, must have tried something else there, but instead the down from Deoxys interrupted it. And this is good damage. Especially while he still has that first life bar up. I feel like it's all gravy at this point. Overhead. Had to spend a bar to get it. You gotta watch out. Sometimes those Brainiac players get a little pesky. They'll, even when they have the meter, they'll just do dive kick, and then dive kick, and then dive kick, thinking that you're looking for the overhead. Uh, the overhead that just never comes. So, possibly challenging there. Uh, what's the Oxus? Oh, punch. Yep. Big uh, chance here for Tekken Master. And a player Tekken Master's caliber isn't gonna leave damage on the table. He's gonna take those. He's gonna punish Ooh. wherever he can. But Deoxys went right back to it. Still did the, the, the low anyway. It did hit though. So here now is Clash. Tekken Master has two. And they both spend all of it. They both spend all their meter here. But I, I feel like, um, you know, Blue Beetle really keeping the pace here. Uh, because that, that, that projectile from Brainiac is a, a character power, it doesn't really build up too much bar. Oh, yeah. Didn't get anything else. And Deoxys slowly being backed up into the corner. Looking for the escape, I think. Yeah, Tekken Master's looking for that wall jump. There it comes. And Deox is giving it to him whenever he wasn't expecting it right. here. Eating the kick as he jumps off oh, the wall. Oh, three? Yes, me, uh, unclashable, excuse me. And now Tekken Master has the life lead, just like that. Oh, oh yeah, wow. If he had kept it up, it actually might have been back because there would have been a lot of life coming back on Deox's side. Punish, no! And Deoxys has super ready to go. Oh, if yeah. Tekken Master gives him the opening, you know he's gonna take it. Oh no, that was an input error. He didn't take advantage of it. And he just charged right in there. Deoxys, you look, when you die with the Clash, it just feels bad. <laughs> it feels really bad, not only just with the Clash, but with full meter, four bars to work with. Those could have been push blocks. Yeah. Those could have been two air escapes, but Deoxys just died with the entire thing completely unutilized. And Tekken Master getting a little coaching here from uh, his, his partner. Uh, shark Teeth. Yeah. Both hailing from very similar regions out in the Middle East. Yeah, about the Middle East. I feel like they're, they're like the, 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 the sole two representatives of that region in this, you know, in this community. And uh, I know Tekken Master, along with the, his team, they're doing a lot to try to bring more of a, of a representation to his region. And uh, you gotta definitely check out Habibi Wars. Oh, <laughs> flipping over to the other side. And keeping Tekken Master in that, in that standing position here, unfortunately, couldn't utilize too much pressure from it. <laughs> Just waiting for the drone to come over. Oh, yeah, okay. Actually did hit right there. Jump one. I, mean, I feel like Deoxys goes for a lot of jump ones because he can float cancel away from them. Right. So they're, they're a little bit less risky in the, in the hands of uh, Blue Beetle. Very similar to, to what Cyborg does as well. Sure, we see that from Brainiac. It looks just like this. Just like that. So this is a very a very interesting air-to-air -air exchange from these characters. Yeah, we saw a lot of that from Brainiac, from uh, Tekken Master's Brainiac in the first game. We didn't see it from Deoxys, so I'm happy to see it go back to it here. Took a risk on the meter burn right there. Paid off. Wanted, I think, the chip, but it didn't work. Did not work, but instead gets punished for his troubles here. Deox is running away with it. He's got the corner, ends it with the command grab. Ooh, 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 very tricky. And not easy to do, by the way, either. Can Tekken Master find this? Okay, control, and he clashes super early. 
two bars. Two bars, but he couldn't get that much life back. And, and you know what? Really what happened there is Deoxys just played him perfectly. Right, right. You know, making him overextend, getting back health that he could not regenerate just yet. Tekken Master assumed Deoxys would spend bars on it. Exactly. Not what happened. That is exactly what happened. Here we go. And there's the Clash. There's a lot of meter this time. So Deoxys does not go down without spending Clash or bars. He's now spent both. Hailing that trade. Approach. Here he comes. And grabs the trade on the other side. Oh Doesn't God. matter what side he activates on. It's more about <laughs> when he lets it go. It's wild to see that giant body. I mean, one of the biggest characters in the game is Brainiac, but he scoots around up there yeah, like been, a little bird. Yeah, he's definitely very mobile. Hold on, leaving him in a standing position, not giving him access to wake up attacks. The Oxus with a very smart setup. And again, this time the correct block by Tekken Master. Try to get air to air. Not quite. No punish. Oh, yeah, just I guess must have thought that there would be a meter burn like this, which is safe. It was, in fact. Okay. Can't get touch now. Tekken Master trying to slowly approach. If he finds the right hit, it's gonna do it. Well. Okay. Keep it up. Yes. What can he get after? This is the question right now for the next mix-up. Where is he going? The grab and it works! Just toss them there, and Tekken Master so thankful for making the right call here, going oh, to the other that side. Face. <laughs> and Deoxys just with his guard up completely, the perfect thing to do against an opponent with impeccable defense is just test the reactions, throw a throw in there, mix it up a little bit. And what a perfect read here by Tekken Master, trying to run away with this set. Very close last game. Tekken Master, you look at the score and it says 2-0, and I don't think that tells the story of this matchup so far. Definitely not. Stuck in the interactable out of play. The interactable is great off of, uh, you know, utility characters, non-power characters. So I think Tekken Master just kind of wants to get it out of play. Out of there. Okay, ready for it. Deoxys with the down two anti air. He starts this thing off. Great blocks. I love that setup, leaving him in a standing position, just kind of giving up a little bit of, of, of combo damage just for, for a possible reset here. And Deoxys shaking it off, shaking off those two games, especially that second one that came down to the wire here. Ooh! He has seen a lot of just blocking by Deoxys, so Tekken Master now starting to get a little funky with his movement. Here's a big punish. And what a call out here by Tekken Master, making that shield bash whiff. That shield bash normally is safe on block, but if you make it whiff, it's got a lot of recovery. Oh yeah, blow it up. Sweet. Tekken Master not afraid to wake okay. up. Deox is really not giving him uh, enough of a reason to stop. Three bars, two. Let's see what they spend on this. It's gonna be two for zero for Tekken Master. So Deoxys now spent more than he could actually get back, but not by much. Okay, interrupted. Very nice. Deoxys will spend the bar on it, and he gets a little bit more damage. Here now is Tekken Master getting out of things. And no meter on Deoxys' side, so it's whatever Tekken Master wants. It's only one, 10, or 15% back. Checking out that trade, that, those missiles here from Brainiac. Trying to find an opening here. And it, you know, I feel like a lot of this fight, you know, okay. when they when they take to the air, it's definitely in Tekken Master's favor. How did he know that was still going to hit? Perfectly timed. That is one of the weirder uh, background bounces. Mm -hmm. Chucking the interactable right into Deoxys' face, getting that damage. Tekken Master's in a good position right now. Two bars for Deoxys. He's got to find something for himself. Tekken Master is just, yeah, jumping up into the air. He's very safety kind of play. Well, he didn't actually cancel into the dive king on that. Not sure what he was oh, looking for. He gets the background bounce. No, escape. Deoxys lives. Not for long. It's Tekken Master eliminating Deoxys 3 to 0. Who can't believe it? What? His eyes could not have rolled no. back farther. Oh, no. He definitely saw the back, the back of the inside of his skull. <laughs> yeah, he was looking there. back at his own brain, saying, Brain, what are you doing up there? What are you doing now? That was a, you know, that last play there, that scramble, it was really, it came down to, you know, Tekken Master knowing that Deoxys was gonna go for an air escape, 
So he didn't typically go with the forward or the back three because they have a lot of recovery on whip. So instead, just kind of waited for Deoxys to, to come back and, and almost to say, like, okay, go ahead, air escape. And, you know, Deoxys picked up on that and, and didn't air escape until the last possible opportunity to, to, to get out of the combo. It gave him a little bit of, help, uh, a little bit of a, a shot, mm -hmm. but wasn't really much of one. That's, That's it for Deoxys. So he won the Texas Showdown. He got top eight at final round. He couldn't go to Combo Breaker. And today ends up getting, what are we at? S top 16. So not too shabby, but not quite up to what he had been doing. It's a pretty stacked event. Yeah, and, and definitely not what he, he, not only just what he anticipated for himself, but what a lot of people yeah. uh, were expecting out of Deoxys. Not only because you have this, you know, wild card factor of playing a character that a lot of people don't play or are very familiar with, but because he's also a very talented player. So, you know, big shout outs to Deoxys and, and bigger shout outs to Tekken Master for, for sure. For making top eight. That was oh, to yeah. make loser side, loser side top eight. So, so that means, just looking at the way that the brackets worked, Foxy Grandpa, uh, so Buffalo eliminated Foxy Grandpa, Tekken Master then eliminated Buffalo, then he eliminated Deoxys. Uh, Tekken Master also eliminated Nubkicks. It's quite a run right there. So Brito Voorhees eliminated Forever King, now it's Brito Voorhees versus Ominous. Well, actually, no, we... we, we oh, we there was an error in Smash... Oh, were... no! <laughs> Forever King beat Burrito Voorhees Oh, there was an Ominous. error in Smash GG! Someone clicked the Heartbreaker. wrong button. Heartbreaker. Heartbreaker, especially because we wanted, you know, we wanted that story. We wanted we the. We did. We want the story of, you know, the, the little brother learning everything from from the master. Oh. You know, and 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 you know, I, I'm sure if in in the event that this would ever happen, you know, oh. as as salty as, as Forever King would be, I think he would be proud <laughs> of his brother if he, he did sure, get sure. the courage to beat him. Or I guess but that's not what happened. I no, guess. no, no. But let's, so. let's, let's, let's talk about Gur and Honeybee. Though. <laughs> okay, okay. So Gur eliminated King Gambler. Uh, he then beat whoever won between Hayate and Big D. Not sure what happened there. And now it's going to be Gur versus Honeybee. Gur versus Honeybee. Now Gur, you know, formerly known as as a Bane player. Yeah. Bane and, and a little bit of a dead shot. I think he it's had true. a really strong dead shot. Yeah when Deadshot was viable. Yeah. Uh, but that character no longer exists. And, uh, you know, I feel like every time Gur came up to bat and it was Honeybee sitting there, you know, it's almost like the same thing. When, when you have a different flag player going up against Bio, they have no chance. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you have a different Bane player going up against Honeybee, they have no chance. But Gur has actually found a home in his new main in The Atom. Yeah, and he's really the Adam. There are the the Adam. Uh, yeah, right. He's the the Adam. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's he's done a lot of the work to make the character really what he is now. But he's not the only person in the world playing, but at this level, he really is. Definitely. And I, I mean, what I love most about it is is that you never know where he's going next, right? There's not like a traditional footsies game out of Adam. There's not even really a traditional zoning game. He's just kind of a weird, you're running, but occasionally attacking kind of character. It's very nice. weird. And and that, and that weirdness is part of why it works. It's not the traditional game plan. Other characters are trying to play traditional rushdown, defense, whatever it is. He is very untraditional. Yeah, he's definitely a mix of both. And utilizing that, that character power here, Honeybee gets the wake up punish, very uh, rare instance here in this game, but uh, that character power drops it down to a tiny little hitbox that can hit you with lows, overheads, or even throws. Right. And, uh, you know, it's just, it's just so pesky, and it's kind of like a, a, a nice way for Adam to get in, get damage, and then back off, wait for it to be up oh, again. No. Okay, just starts it off with the overhead, fine. Right back into things here is Honey Bee. Another drop twice in one round, very rare to see that. Let's see what he goes for here. He tried to delay things. Okay, the overhead ends up doing it. A meter for a back three. Really great anti-air uh, option, pretty much for almost any character in this game. Uh, does absorb a hit of armor, so you know, get rid of that jump in attack. Okay, here's another chance for Honeybee to seal the deal, and he does. Gurr finding himself in a really bad spot here. However, he does have access to his character power. Can he utilize it here? Turn it on and go ham here. You have to respect the multitude of options. It's not just that. He could have teleported out. He could have done jump into jump three. Really good button. He could have done float on the way down. A lot of things for him. Oh, Kerr chasing down that backdash. What a great call here. Putting Honeybee into the corner and buying himself a little bit more real estate, which is really what he needs to do once he does get the hit here. 
successful trait activation here. If you do survive it, That's you know. the second time. We've, so we've seen on reaction that ground pound twice for Honeybee when he sees Gurgo for his own ground pound. For his own, yeah, his own little Different. stomp. Yeah, stomp, I guess is a better way to put it, yeah. Almost did it again there with the jump in. At least got the pressure going. Great air escape by Gur, recognizing that back three animation from the flash. Ancient away, trading with the down two. Here Can't we go. Make it work. Yep, some damage out of it. Oh, I think he punished. That was definitely a punish, Gur, not anticipating it correctly. Now when Adam gets out of the character power. Okay, okay. Oh, man. All right, oh, all right. Man. All right. Now when Adam gets out of that character power, when that trait is up and, and deactivated, if he doesn't go into a throw animation, the Adam is actually in a very long, punishable, you know. Cooldown. Yeah, a cooldown where he's just, you know, holding on to his science and, you know, just, <laughs> just not able to really block. And, and Honeybee recognized that, that Gurr made a mistake. And the, and the and longer that you jump. continue pressure in that trait, the longer your cooldown's gonna be. So so you have the, the risk of, do you continue the pressure, try to find the hit or the grab, or do you sort of cancel and back off early? I feel like they always just kind of look for the, they just look for the hit. And, and yeah. that character power gives Adam one of the easier uh, first hit initiatives. You know, it, it, it's real tough. There we go. Sets out the blue crawler. And a little bit of light zoning, no big deal, Honeybee just walking forward. I really like that, ending the trade instantly. Oh my god! I can't believe that was his reaction. I mean, that's, well, look, when, that's when, ridiculous. When a little crawler is coming at you, a lot of people really just want to wanna jump over it. They don't want to block it, right. and that's what Gurr's feeding on. Right. That's the tendencies. Understanding Honeybee hitting him there with a counter. Gurr possibly trying to do okay. something else. Another reset here. Good block of the low. And there's the sweep. Okay, yes. Gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah, just like that Honeybee. Uh, hasn't quite taken the round, but very close. Yeah, that's gonna do it. It was a defensive throw, though, so out of the corner. And Gurr gets a lot of screen now. Again, Again it's very right. consistent. Honey and Bee. look, I mean, respect Honey because that's not easy to react to, but he's done it consistently. Yeah, definitely. 100% uh, purely reaction based and stopped right there in the running man stance. Didn't want anything to do. The double overhead after the float. Honeybee not ready for it. And Gurr converting into a lot of damage Ooh, here. Damage over time. The green junk. <laughs> Getting out of there. Teleport, no meter burn. So no hit, actually, but pretty recover, pretty fast recovery. Another on reaction thing by Honeybee, but not the rest. Allows the clash. Let's see what they go for on this. It's just one apiece, and they both spend it. Very interesting choice. A lot of Flash players love holding onto that bar because it means so much combo potential for them. Oh, he did the grab! And how are you supposed to see, how are you supposed to react to a throw no, when, the, <laughs> when your opponent is down to a tiny little molecule oh. here? Throwing down the damage over time, enhancing it to make sure that this is a wall that Honeybee cannot cross. This is a line that he cannot go yeah. over, or else he's going to lose that tiny little life that he has left. And Gurr just pretty much checkmating Honeybee there and tying it up one to one. You know, you talked about how when people play against uh, Honeybee or Biohazard, uh, uh, those, so Honeybee has played against uh, a, a, a Bane a million times, right? Yes. It's, it's a match that he knows really, really well. Almost nobody gets to say that about Adam, because there are so few Adams. And so at, at this level of play, it's really just Gurr. And if you haven't played a lot against Gurr, you don't have that experience. Yeah, you, you gotta give him games. You gotta give him games if you wanna Punish. find out how he works. Okay, yeah, it blows up the trade immediately. Ah. Oh, you okay, what the? Wake up, why not? No reason not to. What's he gonna do? Yeah, some good damage on that. The escape. And the pound there hitting the hitting the the, the, the temple or the, the little pyramid there. And it just like spreading out to the entire ground. But Honeybee finding his footing here, getting that jump in and you know, sealing the deal here for this first round. Now let's see how far he can take this little pixel inside coming a mile away. That was sick. What an anti-air here by Honeybee. A little stagger pressure, and Gurr gets out of the way, gets out of dodge. Ooh, it actually whiffed. 
And there's a Clash. One bar! Flash has none. And it is indeed going to be one. 15 back. Flash just playing patiently, Honeybee just doing his regular thing in there occasionally. Anchor stomping on the ground. Uh, you know, spreading that hitbox over the entire floor. Trying to get out of there, but this is gonna hurt. No way you want to air escape because you know Honeybee's gonna continue the combo. Nice. And chip. Okay, well, really no big deal for Honeybee's perspective. It's gonna be quite a while until Honeybee's worried at all. Now, it doesn't end up coming up down two. He was looking for the jump. Had exactly the right call. And Coach Steve comes up to do his work again. Coach Steve. The acting coach <laughs> for Gurr here. Uh, you know, Gurr, as talented as he is, you know, he, he's he's a very humble guy. You know, yeah. he, he does say that a lot of his success mainly comes from the fact that this entire year he's been playing this fighting game with a player like Coach Steve, and Coach Steve has been, you know, showing him how to be resilient, showing him how to be patient, how to rely on defense and not really just go in, go in, go in, which is the type of player that Gurr was throughout all of MKX and throughout all of Injustice 1, right? And, you know, big, big hats off to Coach Steve. You know, if, if you're a big fan of Gurr, you have to be a big fan of Coach Steve. So again, this is to get into loser side top eight, and Honeybee is one game away from doing so. Let's see if Gurr can make the changes he needs to make. Great combos and damage. He's got the corner for himself now. Gurr looking like a completely different player in this yeah, a game. Yeah, more active, I would say. Yeah, I definitely don't know what Coach Steve wow. told him, but wow. it's working. Coach Steve keeps whispering sweet nothing since the Gurr's here, because it is working here as Honeybee looking like he might lose this, this, this lead here. Out of there. And he goes into the trade here again. Good damage, what has he got? No, it's just it's trying to run away. Couldn't quite get the crawl. And now the flash doing a lot of damage as the flash will do. It's gonna be enough, oh my. I mean, to be fair, that's two bars. That's two bars, that's a lot of resources here. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. I think what, what Coach D possibly oh, might nice. have told uh, Gurr is to, to start using trait in less obvious spots. You know, just because it's up doesn't mean that you need to use it right, right. now. The multiple hitting jump in two from the flash, the demise of Gurr as he looks for that meter burn back three. That meter burn back three only has one hit of armor. What a heartbreaker here as Gurr forced to use the clash, forced to set the position back into the neutral. Now he could have spent more than that. He only spent one bar though. That's on him. Let's see if that pays off. Approaching and that range on the jump. There's excellent hitbox on it. No, not the rest. Individual hits are mounting. They're adding up. Oh, yeah. He has to hold on to this, though. No air escaping. That's just going to be a waste of meter with the Into character one. power. The challenge. He's out of there. It's a punish. He waited for it. How did he try to get this? Oh, that might be it. And this is enough. Meterberg forward three, Meterberg forward three, unclashable damage here. Not only do you add more hurt to it when you meter burn it, you just can't air escape either. Great presence of mind there, Biker. So now final game for both. One will be eliminated in ninth place. One will make top eight and play tomorrow. There it is. That's what Gurr was hoping for. The crawl comes up. Wow, that actually beat. I mean, there is a hurt box in the little atom. I mean, you can definitely hit him, but I'm surprised that that did. Yeah, no, there, there definitely is a hurt box. You see it a lot when, uh, you know, they have to go up against something that's so active, and, and Honeybee understands that. You know, he's really, really done his homework here. Oh, Hitting him right out of All right, all right, here's Honeybee. Match point to get into top eight. He walks in, he just was patient. I think he was just low blocking, just to hold the down. He's harassing so much with down one. Let's get so Gurr, one bar spent on that. Yeah, he gets that and right into the trait, into what? Is he gonna block this whole thing? He, he did. did! Look, if you block that whole thing, you deserve to get the punish. Yeah, no, that you definitely do. Not the easiest thing. Oh, this may be it. I Next hit. 
I, I think he's dead. I is think that he's dead. It? Yeah, I think oh he's my dead. god, you're I think right. he's dead. This is Honeybee. This is the Flash God Lord taking out Kerr and moving on to top eight. What a conversion. Eliminating Kerr in ninth place. Honeybee. We'll see him tomorrow. Loser side top eight. His brother, of course, Biohazard, is in the winner side top eight. So congrats to, to both members of the family right there. Now. You really thought he was still alive? I thought he would live. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. In did retrospect, too. I'm like, wow, that was silly. The, the, no, the Flash has so much, uh, you know, he has so many opportunities to turn any combo, any stray hit into so much damage if he has bar. And, you know, that that's pretty much what Honeybee did. So Woo. there are two <laughs> matches remaining to decide who else makes top eight. One of them is coming up to the plate right now. It's going to be Echo Fox Scar on the right side versus Forever King on the left. One of them will play against Tekken Master in loser side top eight. The other one is Echo Fox Sonic Fox versus Noble Rewind in losers. Boy, I really feel I feel like that's a danger time right there for Sonic Fox, but we'll, we'll see. So just to, to describe what else has occurred, Ominous eliminated Infinity. Forever King then eliminated Ominous. That's how he got here. And Rewind eliminated Coach Steve. Silver Rye eliminated Illusions. Rewind then beat Silver Rye, and that's how Rewind will play against Sonic Fox. Uh, Gurr eliminated King Gambler and Hayate, who had beaten Big D. And uh, I, I do believe Honeybee is in that top eight now. He is in the top loser eight. side. Honeybee will be facing the winner of Sonic Fox uh, and Rewind. So, you know, either way, I feel like Honeybee's got a. I mean, it doesn't matter. If you're this far in the tournament, it's a tough opponent no matter oh, yeah. where you're sitting. Oh, yeah. But can we talk about the, the consistency, <laughs> the fact that, you know, Tweety is and top eight winner? Yeah. The, he, this is a man who is just downplaying himself, saying how he has such a tough path, such a tough pool. But here he is, the victor through all of that, not just through his pool, but even beyond, which is, you know, it's not, not an easy thing. Well, I believe Gross was also in winner's side top eight at Combo Breaker, right? I yeah, I, I think, believe they, I think they, he, they met in winner's uh, finals. Right. That could happen again because they're both again in winner's side of top eight. But we'll see. That's for tomorrow. But right now, let's focus on Forever King and Echo Fox's Scar. Or Forever King rocking his Yomi shirt. Little, little throwback yeah, to the good back. old MKX days. Two of the best MKX players. Oh, yeah. Definitely. For Scar, it's going to be the Brainiac character that he goes with. Pretty regularly. I like that character for him. Uh, he has really good footsies, but I also really, I just really like his approach in general. He was excellent at it in MKX before, uh, and and he does that really really well with Brainiac. Great mobility, and he and he himself as a player has excellent movement. All right, here we go. What's going to be the starting move for Everking? Trying to find a little bit of space between himself and Scar. Back it up, and he does get the hit here with a back two three. A pretty safe string, a, a string that just kind of built a little bit of space between himself and his opponent. But for Everking, does sometimes actually do the back two in the slide. Might have been why that overhead hit. Possibly, especially when he's when he's looking for that first hit. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when he has bats ready, right? Like that's exactly. it's pretty common, to be honest. And what a block there by Scar going on the right side. Unfortunately, he didn't block that low and was susceptible to that entire string here. Forever King trying to snipe him out of the air. Waiting for the bat. You know, Scar's down in life, but I like a lot of his decisions so far. Looking to clear the air. And there's the bat for the punish into the corner. That'll do it. Forever King takes the first round. And definitely want to utilize that meter to make sure that that health bar is gone. Make sure that your opponent stays in the corner here. And, and you know, that's just perfect spacing here by Forever King. Perfect spacing and awareness. Trying to go in still. Scar harassing, yes. The hit comes. Pretty good damage. Starting things off. You know, you're usually looking for the overhead against Brainiac, but the low, that range that it has, is pretty solid. A little bit of a drop here, and Scar thought doing something, pressing buttons, or doing something that just wasn't to block low. And what a block there on the, on the, on the reset here. Forever King looking to extend. Scar with three. Okay. Nothing from Forever King. Feels confident enough. Scar, slow approach again. Love the movement right there by Forever King. Out of the corner. 
Playing safe. Oh, love it. Punish, not quite there. Oh, boy. That's a big swing. You know, if that had been a punish by Forever King, not only is he still alive, but he's taken off a bunch of life from Scar, and he's got a pressure opportunity. Totally different story now. Trying to make things happen with Scar. Maybe yeah. overextending just a bit. So it's gonna hurt here. Gonna leave Scar in a standing position. Yeah, that'll do it. Even if you block the forward three, you're still stuck. Yeah, no, I, I like what Forever King was doing there, keeping him on the ground and, and you know, keeping him nice and low, not really giving him the opportunity to air escape, uh, you know, where it would have been safe. Air escaping when your back's in the corner is pretty scary stuff, man. Mm -hmm. uh, just because you air escape doesn't mean you get out of the combo just yet. You really have to nice. time it perfectly. Are we gonna see a reset here? No. Just goes for pure damage here. Still has three bats ready to go. Let's see if Forever King can make the hit happen. Looking for Brainiac to be in the uh, uh, be in the air. And you know, when Batman straight is loaded there, you, you gotta wonder and you gotta just know that he is looking to release those with any gap that you give him. Ooh, okay. Scar trying to approach on the basis of that, but I love the wake up from Forever King. Just puts up a huge projectile wall. Okay, would have been shift so Scar spends the bar. Ends up not mattering anyway. Forever King, I really like that he's clearing the skies. It's really what he's paying attention to as Scar approaches. Nice. Flipping over to the other side here. Are we going to see a restand? Oh yes, we do. That Goes. was expensive as two bars completely lost. Down two did not work. This is all Forever King right now. Scar finally does bring out the Clash, but just Forever King has had total control. Pressure, offense, even zoning, everything's worked. Yeah, man, he's been really just like making the shots here and, yeah. and you know, really taking it to Scar. And, and Scar is finding himself in a bad spot. I wouldn't be surprised if Scar changed characters completely. Yep. I know you were, you, you, you were complimenting his, his Brainiac, but you know, this might be a matchup thing. Yeah, no, I, I think you're right about that. This approach has been very difficult for Scar. Of course, you gotta contend with both upward battering and the mechanical bat and conversion into grapple. I, that's just not an easy approach. But you know what I think is really sly about Forever King is I feel like he wasn't utilizing the upward battering until the second match. You know, until he, I, I think okay. right, yeah, okay. you know, if, if you do that to an opponent on the first match, you're just kind of like giving him giving him the, the, the ammunition or giving him the information of, wow, he can really deal with my jumping shenanigans. Maybe I'll switch. Right. And I feel like kind of Forever King was a, a little witty in, in taking that second game so away like, from like Scar. So like Forever King convinced Scar to go back with Brainiac again when he maybe should not have, but he's going to stick with it even still. That's uh, that's up to him. That's a bold move, man. Right after that, that that onslaught of just upward batterings and scar. Like, I, I, I feel like I couldn't see where the opening was. I couldn't see where scar was like, okay, I, I know what I'm doing wrong here. And oh. yeah, typically there's at least like you can identify what you should have done, but I don't really know. And this is a lot of control right now by Forever King and still is. The bat, oh, he didn't bring it out even. Oh, didn't anticipate the cross up, didn't anticipate uh, Scar being over there on the other side. And Scar finally getting something going here. Oh, oh. Takes the bear trap out of his hands. Was that a cross up dive kick? I don't know. Hard to, hard, hard to tell, I guess. And very, very tough to do, also. You yes. Know, it's a, I feel like it's a very specific spot. Yeah, here. it's like not even intentional sometimes. Yeah. No, definitely not. And Forever King, you know, just showing that he understands what kind of execution you need in the corner, understands how to maximize the damage as best as he can. Checking those Slowly batteries. Slowly walking. Yeah, that's really been the name of the game for both of them. This is how a lot of the set has looked so far. Forever King just throwing it out, building a little bit of bar while doing so. And Scar, you know, seemingly at a loss as to how to make a credible approach. Getting that forward three. Okay. This is just, I mean, it's not just that Forever King is zoning well, it's that when Scar is in, Forever King makes the excellent defensive calls. He will turn de uh, his own defense into his own offense well. It's like he's just had everything. Oh, and covering his bases here, Scar sending out that drone, dropping that nice little projectile onto the ground here. Forever King trying to get a throw to happen. Well, Scar's on the ropes. 
three bars versus two, and Forever King feels content enough to just not spend anything. I mean, the way he's been playing, for Scar to have an extra 25% life on, uh, on the life bar, it just doesn't feel like it matters all that much. Yeah, again, excellent preemptive anti-air. He I mean, has the bat, the mechanical bat now to keep it up. It's a very quick up bat ring. You yeah. know, it, it just comes right out of his hand, straight to where it needs to go. Wow, the tech, and immediately into it is Forever King. He needs maybe one more mix-up. This might be it. That was the reset there here. There you go. There you go. Forever King with a very dominant 3-0 to make top eight. Such smart stuff there by Forever King, extending his combo, leaving him in a standing position, and you know, really taking advantage of all that hits done from releasing the yeah. mechanical bat and going into a reset, really repping that Yomi, Yomi out this weekend. You know, Forever King just blew up Scar, but I hope Tekken Master was watching because he is also a Brainiac user, and that's exactly what uh, the player he'll be playing against in top eight, it's going to be Forever King versus Tekken Master. We'll see if Tekken Master goes to that character or what. But again, that's tomorrow. This is the last match we're going to have of the night to see who makes top eight. Echo Fox, Sonic Fox in Losers versus Noble Rewind. Now let's see if the Noble team can finish the Fox off, not only just knocking them into Losers, uh, but just eliminating them from the tournament. Yeah. And I think that would probably be the biggest upset of this weekend if Sonic Fox did not make it into oh, top eight. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. When was the last time that's happened in a top level, uh, well, really in any Injustice tournament? I, has I, it, has I, it happened? I, I I'm not sure it actually has happened. If, if, I, I mean, think, I'd like to know, to be honest. If anybody knows, let me know. I, I think probably his worst result was oh, there's e -League. E League. That was probably his worst result. He didn't make top eight at E League. That's right. Yeah, that's right. I mean, was it an eight? I mean, it was more like everyone was, was shooting for four? top four. I guess it was four. Yeah, everyone was true. shooting for that top four, you know, the, the the, the 16 players that yeah, did right. qualify were kind of like separated all together, and Sonic Fox was actually double eliminated by Forever King. That's right. And that was, I think, in losers' finals of their pool, which means he actually was top eight. Do you think about it? He was top eight, but he wasn't shooting matter. for that. Yeah, no, he wasn't matter. shooting for that. Of he course. wanted that top four. He wanted to, to come back the next week, and Forever King completely denied him. But yeah, that, that would be a crazy upset. Uh, these two have played. They, First of all, they play a lot. Together. Yeah, I was going to say, they play a lot casually. For sure, they train up a lot. Uh, Rewind made top eight at Combo Breaker. He was sent to loser side uh, by Deoxys here. Yeah, and... Uh, did, did they play at Combo they, Breaker? They did play at Combo Breaker, and I believe Sonic Fox yeah. bested him in... Uh, it was either in top eight winners or top eight losers. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised. And look at this, Sonic Fox going straight to Red Hood, not playing any games. Mm. You know, I don't, see, I don't see... <laughs> Smart stuff by Sonic Fox. Yeah, considering how he lost to Samid, kind of screwing around at the start of it. <laughs> yeah, no, I, that's definitely what happened, and that, that's, that's, I'm just calling it the way it is. Yeah, I think you're right. All right, and uh, Rewind, oh <laughs> looking God. for something here, and he's a Gotham star right to the face. Sonic Fox, oh, I love that he dashed in and didn't attack, he just dashed and waited. It's so threatening. Two bars spent, and it feels like Sonic Fox has just had such control that that two bars, you know, he's it, it, happy to give it up. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. And not only that, but uh, Rewind actually slightly overextended there. Uh, his red health bar went to max, meaning that, you know, there was a little bit of damage that he didn't get back. Yeah. Kind of like a, an in inefficient use of right. red bar. Meter burning it for that extra chip damage, also trying to keep it nice and uh, nice and in his favor afterwards. Whoo -hoo, the range. Here we go with the challenge here. Rewind getting on the board, doing some damage, not only doing damage, but putting Sonic Fox into the corner. Okay, nice. And what a block here by Sonic Fox. Can he get there? There it is. That was a punish. That yeah. was a perfect punish of those air guns by Noble Rewind. So, okay, first life bars aside, Rewind is looking a little stronger. He's moving a little bit more, getting some punishes, doesn't there? No, I, I guess that might have been too low. Yeah, was, yeah. So I guess Red Hood has to be high enough because that was a reversal there by uh, Noble Rewind. Couldn't have come out any faster once it made contact. Right? Right. I think it's more about, you know, when it whiffs or when it when it's uh, a little high in the air for Red Hood. And what a punish here. here. Now. Understanding the interactable, understanding that he is susceptible to, to, to a full combo punish. 
But even this chip is something Rewind can't afford. I'm surprised we didn't see a push block. Here we go. He really can't get touched now. And it's going to be hard. There, will he spin a bar? I'd be surprised to see. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm looking for exactly that. I'm looking for oh, exactly that on the on the chip. Like, it, it's not no, like, I think you're stuck. Why did you do that? <laughs> why did you come at me? You yeah. know I was going to do lunge. Right. Uh, now, Rewind is very familiar with playing, uh, uh, with playing as other characters. We saw him playing a little bit of Blue Beetle before, and at Combo Breaker, we saw a lot of Firestorm. All right. So I'm not really sure why he's not picking Firestorm in this particular matchup, or maybe against this particular opponent. But maybe Sonic Fox knows a little something about Firestorm that the rest of us mere mor mortals don't. <laughs> Oh, the mine. Yeah, getting tripped here by the mine. So Lock and low. In the last game, we didn't see too much strong zoning. That wasn't necessarily the name of the game, but it works. It's good. No commitment here by Rewind. He had the perfect read with that neutral jump, but just didn't oh, believe. What? Smacking him right out of his airspace, right out of his... It's just, he, he was trying to advance. He was trying to get in, and Rewind with the complete denial here. Bar for bar. Mm -hmm. Sonic Fox is in a little bit of damage here. Chip. And good blocks there by Rewind. Understanding that the meter burn portion of that lunge oh. is an overhead, but Sonic Fox sealing the deal here uh, with, a, with a jump and gun attack. Sonic Fox threatening at any time he can move forward. That's plus on block. He's also got walking lows. There it is. Got to open up here by the overhead. Not sure if Rewind is pressing a button or not, but he definitely wasn't pressing a button there. Getting hit by that throw. And Sonic Fox inching away, trying to Jeez. run away with this life lead. Oh, man, and he did go in. Making it a little tricky. Well, okay. Maybe too tricky for his own good. Yeah, it was definitely a weird little, not, not quite a hard knockdown, more of like a, a semi-hard knockdown. Oh, boy, Black Adam is in big, big trouble. So Rewind takes that, but he can't get touched. I mean, Clash doesn't even matter at this point because nothing that he gets hit by will not kill him before he can clash. And Sonic Fox is looking at me to so build some meter. Once he gets a bar, it might be all she wrote. And, uh, you know, Rewind just needs to be a step ahead of go. him. Yeah, oh. as soon as that happened, that was it. <laughs> yeah, no, he was he was a little too a little too close to Sonic Fox. That lunge is very fast. Yeah. You input it as a special move because it is a special move. And, you know, it comes out immediately. As soon as you're out of blocks, then you're coming out. No need to respect anything. Just, no. just do it, especially if you got that bar and meter. Meter burn it, make it an overhead, make it safe if they do block it. Boy, Re Rewind has just struggled so hard in this match. And it, it's tough for him. We t talked about how he made top eight at Combo Breaker and how that was the first of, the, of a major event where he's made top eight. And it was, it was uh, him breaking a string of bad luck of getting ninth places at events. And right now, that looks like where he's headed. Better start for him to this round, though. Yeah, definitely getting something going here, utilizing that background bounce and, uh, you know, holding on to that bonus Ooh, meter here. The dash! He just passed the mine. Okay. That was cool. The Sonic Fox just wasn't ready for it. Wasn't ready for him to get out, and he read it like a book, going for the interactable in the corner just to get out. Sonic Fox gets the hit first. And he went for the low. Okay. That's that's the tricky stuff. Is is just how infrequently Sonic Fox Ooh. meter burns that low mine because it does detonate right away. Right. Combo launcher, all that good stuff. Good block there by Rewind. Okay, yeah. Looking for that wind button, the yeah. snap of his fingers here. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately for Rewind, that orb is still active, which means he's got to wait a little bit longer to get that trait back and ready to go. Yeah, he'd love to have it to cancel things. Is that chip death? Yes, it is. So Sonic Fox is at match point to make top eight. And with the boots here, knocking him down uh, in the corner. A nice delay wake up by Rewind. Kind of throwing off uh, Sonic Fox's timing just a little bit here. Oh, what whoa. a tech. And then out of the air as well. Sonic Fox waits for his opponent to get up. Here's some chip. All oh. right. And the Palpatine here just to get him off, put him at full screen. Not sure where he really wants to be, though. He does have a slight life lead, so I think he does want to nice. trade here. And what a punish here by Rewind. Can he Ooh. get on the board? Flips out. Oh, he wanted unclassable damage. That would have been cool, yeah. He wanted unclassable damage real bad. Oh, no! 
Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Nice. So, so he, he, went, he went into trade, which does damage by itself. There was no more combo. Sonic Fox got hit, got hit by the follow-up, and that was death. Back to Red Hood, why not? That character's been so strong for him. But that was a really good game by Rewind. Rewind showing that he could do it, you know, and you just yeah. gotta take it one game at a time. The hard part was done. It, it, shaking out of it, shaking out of, you know, the momentum and the onslaught of Sonic Fox. And now Rewind can really, really get something going here for himself. Interruption there by Sonic Fox, maintaining pressure. He tried to anti-air, but no, jump two works. That's a nice little floaty jump there by Black Adam. A lot of people don't anticipate it here. Yeah, of course there are downsides to having a floaty jump, but then in some ways it's nice too. You can get over anti-airs in a way that some characters cannot. Definitely, or, or just kind of just overall throw off the timing, you know, and, and that's that might be something that Sonic Fox needs to adjust to. Here we go. Firm by Rewind comes. Escape into continuing damage. Not a lot, though. Yeah, no, but he definitely did sniff it out. He did know that Sonic Fox was going to utilize those two bars for the air escape. And right now, Rewind is looking really good here. Yeah. Looking like he's going to be tying this up. The Sonic Fox doesn't adapt. The Sonic Fox doesn't go and switch to the other situation. The Palpatine here, meter burning it for a limited power here. Rewind looking so good right now. He really has control all of a sudden. He's trying to play patiently, doesn't want to overcommit here. That was a punish, sick. There's a, oh, counter. There's a little bit of a counter. I guess Sonic Fox maybe trying to backdash. Just didn't want anything to do with Black Adam up close here. Right. Wow, he's pressed the button in a very funky spot. But it was the right spot, and again, we have match point. Sonic Fox. Think about the Gotham Stars here again with the Black Magic here. Boots, and Sonic Fox gets the clash. Two bars for him. And he spends both. He's very close to the third. Yes. Yeah, I feel like in this matchup, both players are, are kind of always doing things, always throwing out projectiles. So I think Sonic Fox was, was content with the idea that he will go back to oh meter building. God. Hold on, just smacking his advancing forward. That's so hard to do. You have to have such reactions. The setup here. Blows him up. Oh boy, that's gonna do it. And rewind is at two to two. Look at that expression on Sonic Fox's face. He this did. is not somebody who wants to go out now. He didn't think he would do it again. He did it again. Sonic Fox punished him for it, and he said, "Okay, cool. He's, oh. he's done. He's not doing it." Captain Cold Sonic Fox betting all the chips right here on this character. This Nowhere is nowhere else bet. to go. This, this is, is the bet. bet. This is the bet. His, his cold got destroyed by Samij, and it's what he's gonna go to here with his tournament life online. For Sonic Fox to not make top eight would be a giant, giant upset. I don't care who beats him to do so, it's, a, it's an upset. It is, you're 100% right. Sonic Fox is just that good of a player here, but hold on, getting something going here, gets the back throw, putting Rewind a little bit closer to the corner. Now, just finding himself in a bad spot, we might be seeing puddles. Oh yeah, he can get real tricky in this corner. Oh, okay, let's him escape! Nice. He jumps out of there, gets him with a foot dive straight down, and Sonic Fox not ready for it. Wake up with gun, all right. I mean, he did back off, so he kind of just showed him, all right, go ahead, build a little bit of meter. And Dash get is in, okay, movement here. Interruption again, didn't spend bar on it. Wan a whiff punish, and just like that, here's Rewind. He's at match point to beat Sonic Fox to eliminate him to eliminate him and deny him any dreams of making that top eight, any dreams of possibly winning this tournament. Okay, but Sonic Fox, again, three times he has had match point here. This is the third. Can he make it happen or can Rewind make this complete comeback? Now watch out, Snow Globe, almost ready to go. Rewind cannot give him any okay. more breathing room. Okay. He will start it. It's almost there. Rolls out, the punish comes, and you know he's gonna, yep, charges it up. So the clash, that rewind has a lot of meter. Utilizes two bar, still has one to hold on. Pretty much a second one to back that one up as well. However, Sonic Fox did get to level two trait, and you know the snow globe is ready to go. Yeah. Rewind cannot give him enough, can't give him a lot of breathing room. Oh, interruption there. Not a lot out of that. Meter burns this one. Here's Palpatine. 
still has that level two trait. The anti-air instantly with the clash. Sonic Fox, two bars, I think rewind on one. Two also, and they both spend two. They both spend it all here. When Black will Sonic Fox bring out the trait if he gets the chance, but he hasn't. He hasn't, I think he doesn't want to test rewind's oh, uh, reactions. He wants to get a, a safer situation. Right, get where, a setup for himself. Yeah, he, he doesn't want to leave this it. Maybe it. This may be it now. Oh boy, this is actually a tough spot right now for Rewind to be in. He's caught! He's caught! Is he gonna freeze? Yes, he is. Oh. Nothing really Rewind could have done. Possibly push The box. setup here, he's trying to delay, oh. and that's gonna do it! Sonic Fox somehow still qualifies for top eight. Yeah. Sending Rewind out oh. again at ninth. Rewind made top eight at Combo Breaker, and you know he wanted to continue that trend, but it's back to ninth place for him. And it all came down to the shimmy play at the end. Sonic Fox, right in his opponent's face, jumps as he fakes the throw attempt. You know, when you go shoulder to shoulder, that's like almost every great player's instinct. And, and that, that's how you want to react. You're just, he's going to throw me. Yeah. He's going to throw me. And perfectly just executed by Sonic Fox. And Sonic Fox keeping his tournament life yes. alive. Yeah, does not go out before top eight. It, you know, he's been in losers before he in has. top eight. It's, that's not brand new, but we'll see how he ends up doing in top eight. So to recap, winner's side will be Tweety versus Biohazard and DR Gross versus Samij. And then in loser's side, Tekken Master versus Forever King and Sonic Fox against Honeybee. Those are some good matchups. Those are definitely going to be some good matchups. And, and like you mentioned before, I think Tekken Master really needs to do some soul searching after seeing what happened there against, you know, Scar's Brainiac and how Forever King was really just kind of in control. Yep. And we know we, we've known Tekken Master to play a whole sure, a variety list, of characters. Yeah. So, but, but we have been seeing him go with Brainiac. Maybe we're going to see a new character here by Tekken Master. Could I be. hope. I, I think hope. that'd be cool. Oh yeah, do you have info? Is there? Is there I don't tech? know. I, okay. I, I hope. Okay. I hope. Because the, the way you said it was like you had some intel. No, no. You don't have intel. All right. I don't. I don't know anyone. I just sit here and don't okay. talk to yeah, whatever. Sure. It's fine. Uh, yeah, interesting for Sonic Fox versus Honeybee. That's going to be a great one to watch. Two of the most successful players in Injustice 2. Uh, and in, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a cool mix of longtime players, uh, players who have been much more successful in Injustice 2, including just recently, like Tweety, uh, versus players who have been successful for a long time. I think it's great that in two back to back majors, here and Combo Breaker, Tweety and DR Gross have both made winner's side top eight. In fact, Biohazard also might have. I think he also made winner's side top eight at Combo Breaker, if I recall correctly. Yeah. So three of the same players doing it in back-to-back -back majors. That's some consistency right there. I mean, that's definitely consistency. You know, a lot of people do like to say a lot of things boil down to certain chances, certain decision-making, but you can't argue with results and you can't argue with consistency. And these are just the guys that understand and can evaluate everything that's going on and make those right decisions. Yeah, you look man. at a player like Biohazard and he's very methodical when it comes to, you know, what situation he's in, where his venom is, and he's just so good at managing it. And, you know, he, here it is. And I cannot wait for this top eight tomorrow. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to check out anything else, CEO is just insane. Yes. So many great games being played here. So many quality streams. Oh yeah, for sure. So tomorrow is when the top eight will be. It will be at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time. Eastern That's going to be a good one. <laughs> Can't wait. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, if you're not subscribed or following this channel already, please be sure to do so. I'm Darth Arma. Hey, I'm Ultra David. Thanks a lot for watching. Catch you for top eight.